The inherent creepiness of shopping in the girls section of Target for my first sex club outfit wasn't totally lost on me. But I had no idea where I might find something small enough without arousing suspicion. And I was too embarrassed to ask. At 30 years old, I was finally living 500 miles away from my home in San Diego and eschewing the dutiful eldest daughter role. I was going to an invitation-only sex club called Twist. The Jen who always played it safe was going to be the Jen who tempted sin. Yes, in her recently purchased tween-sized miniskirt. <laughs> but tonight, I was going to be Tim's fake girlfriend. Twist was couples only. But to, um, and we would be the most attractive, perhaps the only Asian-American model minority couple there. <laughs> he was still nursing a heart recently broken by the ex. So what better rehabilitation than a play party with adults in North Beach? San Francisco's hotter version of Little Italy. <laughs> when we arrived at the club, I was expecting Stanley Kubrick's eyes wide shut <laughs> to unfold, but it was more like a European discotheque. Lots of neon, strobe, and uh, house music. <laughs> Not exactly my go-to fantasy sexy playtime, but partygoers seemed to be enjoying themselves drinks in hand, chatting, and oh, hey, there's a girl being eaten out five feet away, standing up. Damn, she's got good posture and balance. Courtesy, we were told, was the number one rule here. We had to ask, may I, before taking, making the moves on anyone. I could tell Tim was into perfect posture girl, but I just couldn't imagine, may I lick your pussy? Falling out of his feministy PhD track mouth. <laughs> I suppose if he asked, may I go down on you? He could keep his integrity. But instead of hitting on the other party, uh, play partiers, Tim and I tried dancing. It was awful. I didn't know how to dance to house. I wasn't turned on by it, and I wasn't sure how to move in a way that would turn anyone else on. I needed booty basement. The mating songs of my fellow people of color. I was trying to, I was starting to think that this excursion would be a dud if I, I couldn't even dance. But then, I saw him. The most panty-dropping worthy male in the club. Granted, this play party was proving to be a bevy of basics, but he was actually handsome, like by all socially agreed upon standards. Blonde, tall, fit, symmetrical facial features. My attraction was so textbook. I was fucking horny for the goddamn colonizer. And to my displeasure, he was with a stereotypically hot Asian woman. And holy fuck, they were dancing scandalously to house music. I mean, they were practically consuming each other. And I couldn't stop staring. They were gorgeous. When he caught me, I held my gaze longer than I generally would. And then I made sure I was the first one to look away. Want to go upstairs, Tim asked. Upstairs was a designated continuous play area. If this floor was tame as the foreplay scene, then surely the second, scene, the second floor had to be the hedonist sexual playground. I was hella curious, but also nervous. As we made our way, I expected to be greeted by a miasma of sex smells, a friend once coined as Badissi. <laughs> Butthole, dick, and pussy. I expected some moist, hot, rank atmosphere, the sex tropics of bodies slapping, releasing, <laughs> coiling, spreading, expelling. I expected harsh lighting and the grossest ass fucking. <laughs> but I didn't see any. Well, not immediately. Skulking was required. 
I was hit with a smell, but it was sweet, like cotton candy? <laughs> the floor was more like a loft with dim lighting, chaise lounges, and flowing curtains. We snaked our way through the room in the semi-private spaces with beds. There was so much moaning and humping. When we stopped when we reached a big round bed draped in a gauzy netting with a threesome on display. A 65-year-old dong, the owner of which was being pawed at by two very normal looking women. We sit and watch this very old man getting sucked on by the two women. I have never been so turned off. <laughs> Where was the hot lovemaking? So we get up, walk around some more, and then I see them again. The colonizer and his colonized. <sighs> on a love lounge. She was on her back with her dress hiked up around her waist. Her legs were spread. The straps of her dress had fallen off, exposing her breasts. Her shiny black mane perfectly framing her O face. She was breathtaking. And Blondie was kissing her everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Mouth, neck, tits, stomach, inner thighs. Oh my God, what was I watching? I couldn't stop. I wanted to be her. Her hands <laughs> were in his hair, pushing his face lower and lower until, yes, he reaches that place, and man, is she all hardwood floors. <laughs> but pliable, her labia was like taffy. Like he totally gnawed and pulled at it, like it was taffy. <laughs> Tim and I were still, his mouth agape, and I kept thinking, Jesus fucking Christ, he was really chewing her. <laughs> and my lips are not that <laughs> stretchy. Then they turn to us. Oh my God. Shit. They summon me over. Me! Fuck! Do they recognize me from downstairs? Shit. Fuck. Fuck. Tim looked at me with glee. My eyes widened. I stopped breathing. I could hear the beating in my heart. And I could feel my pulse down there. <laughs> okay, pull it together, you fucking horn dog. I tell myself, this is what you've been waiting for, to be noticed, to be leered at with intensity, to exist. Just don't be so goddamn obvious about it. <laughs> in the outside world, I fall in love shamelessly, at least aesthetically. I enjoy people watching. On occasion, I'm brave. I'll take a risk when someone attractive is in my crosshairs. I'll even wait two seconds longer before averting my gaze. But the bravery always ends there. I am not a closer. But in here, I couldn't hide. I mean, I could be a wallflower, tuck myself into a corner, observe without entering the mise-en-scene. And I could turn down a proposition if approached. I had that power. But why should I? Out there, I'm always looking for someone to notice me. It's as if I can only exist if someone acknowledged me, desired me. Sometimes I think I'm disappearing. The truth is, I wanted to be someone else. And right then, I was Tim's girlfriend, dressed in a skimpy ass outfit that I would never ever wear anywhere else again. He paid the, five, the $80 cover. It was really late. So God damn it, we were going to fucking play. So I made my way over, and in two easy strides, I was sitting between the hottest couple at the party. Look at how pretty and sexy she is, Asian GF said, eyeing the garter belt, peeking out from under my skirt. And as it kept getting hiked higher and higher, so was my anxiety. I wanted to be her, to be with her. But in a strange way, I also wanted to be him to give a woman pleasure. Not as me though, as a man. To have that power of entering and inhabiting her. Wait, was I seriously having an existential crisis in a sex club? <laughs> 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 
May I kiss you, she asked. <gasps> this was it. I was so nervous. I wanted to say something sensual, poetic even, something to make her feel unhinged, to make her melt all over again. But all I could do was say, yes. <laughs> so we kiss. Okay, no, we make the fuck out. <laughs> and at first I was jealous of her fuller lips and self-conscious about my own, but I leaned into it. I let her mouth engulf mine. I was excited at how easily our tongues and lips found their own rhythm. I think Jill Sabule would have been really proud. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tim was just watching, which I don't mind, as long as we're not asked to make out with each other. I was only the fake girlfriend. So Blondie touched and kissed me wherever his girlfriend's hands weren't. It was delicious being the center of attention. I let them caress me. I let them drag their tongues along the length of my neck, collarbone, the tops of my breasts. Suddenly, her breast was in my mouth. <laughs> that her nipple the size of a Rolo. <laughs> Had I asked? <laughs> oh shit, did I break the rules? I was so lost in the moment I fucking forgot about courtesy. <laughs> She's a good kisser, she said to the boyfriend, pushing him toward me. <gasps> was he going to kiss me now? Yes. Wait, he was just eating her out. <laughs> May I, he asked, and before he could finish his question, his hands were cupping my face. Well, I don't smell him on her. His gaze deeply penetrating me, and I swore I could see centuries of colonial subjugation <laughs> twinkling in those recessive blue eyes. <laughs> so I surrendered, slinking my way onto his lap. Meanwhile, Tim was kissing the girlfriend like he had been waiting a long ass time. Cause he had. Even though I was more attracted to my colonizer, he kissed too aggressively. I missed how plump and gentle his girlfriend's mouth was. With him, our teeth clashed and, my, and his tongue filled my mouth like an invasion. But we kept kissing and I kept moaning, my mouth raw from his stubble. And I let his hands and his mouth roam and explore my body like it was some kind of goddamn sensual manifest destiny. And despite my textbook internalized oppression, thanks Bay Area, <laughs> I was unashamed. I felt powerful being on top. He slid his hands carefully up my thighs, his thumbs and fingers grazed the hem of my panties. Skirt now around my waist, I couldn't take it anymore. I wanted him to claim my landmass. <laughs> And so we pressed our bodies even closer. He gripped me. We consumed each other. It was just me and him and them. <laughs> Out of nowhere, the stunned faces of two women from my cohort were glaring at me and my subjugator. For progressive Mills College women, they didn't look too stoked for me. <laughs> I gave them a look that seemed to say, Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Tim stopped in mid-grope too, looked over at me and nodded awkwardly. When the cock blockers finally picked their jaws up from the floor, Tim and I continued to make out with our hot partners. But the misery had dissipated. Even in sexy dark, risk-taking Jen was deactivating. The fourth wall had been broken. It was, I felt disempowered. We slipped out of the club without exchanging information with the hottest couple. I didn't know if I even wanted to plan a future date with them or to return to Twist. I wasn't even sure if I was interested in maintaining a secret sexual persona on the fringes. It was just as much work creating a sex club self as it was being outside world me. The desires and insecurities were all the same. Maybe I played it safe. 
After all, I didn't bone the hottest couple. But actually, I fucking macked on a dude who had just been macking on his girlfriend's vagina. That is so not safe. And I didn't even flinch. Okay, maybe for a hot second. Thank you. 